we got some things to talk about today, including all the talk about the scoring pylons. Eric Jones is out of the 43, but who knows for how long. Which sponsor is on the move? Plus, North Wilkesboro releases their all-star format. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle, aka Racing Boy Short, and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news, and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, comment your thoughts on this video, plus any improvements I can make on the channel. Alright, we're going to start the weekly rundown with this. Over the last week, there's been a huge talking point when it comes to scoring pylons honestly this is not something i ever expected to talk about or even mention ever i didn't think i ever would have to when i picture a racetrack in my mind i always imagine a scoring pylon whether that's a nascar track whether that's a local short track whether that's a road course it just kind of comes with it's just kind of expected to be at the racetrack string base. But lately, it's been looking like NASCAR has been removing some of these scoring pylons. And honestly, it's quite questionable on why they are doing it. Why? 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 A lot of the explanations, or what I like to call excuses, for why they've removed these scoring pylons... You have the right to remain... Has been the huge development when it comes to the huge screens at these racetracks. So a lot of tracks are using the explanation as they've moved the scoreboard over from the pylon onto the screen. But one thing I've noticed and heard from a lot of people looking at the scoring on these screens. It doesn't constantly rotate. A lot of the time it kind of just sits at the top 10 or the top 5. And you don't see where your favorite driver is running in the field. I know every time I go to a NASCAR track, I use that scoring pylon to keep track of where my driver is in the running order. Not to mention, a lot of race car drivers use the scoring pylons as well. A lot of drivers use the scoring pylons under the caution flags to see where their competition or where they are in the field without having to ask their crew chief and or team to try to figure it out. Plus, some of these drivers even like to use it under green flag conditions. I think this is a big time problem. Because first of all, you're taking away from the fan experience. A lot of people are not going to be able to see where their favorite driver is running in the order. And also, some fans aren't going to have great enough eyesight to see some of these TV screens. Oh, I can hear some of you now saying, oh, but Kyle, the TV screens are so huge. Have you seen the one in Texas? Yeah, I've seen the one in Texas, but it's also... On the complete opposite side of the track. Someone like me who has great eyesight, I could see it fine. But there's a lot of fans of NASCAR that are in their 60s, their 70s, their 80s, where they don't have that sort of vision to see that. And honestly, it just messes with the whole aesthetic of the racetrack. It's honestly just off-putting that there isn't a scoring pylon at some of these tracks. I hope all the chatter that not just drivers, but fans and the whole NASCAR community, even personalities are talking about this. I'm hoping the talk of all this could potentially put some pressure on NASCAR in either updating their scoring pylons or a track like Texas Talladega or Watkins Glen to make a new scoring pylon and put it up. Do it! Just do it! All right, on to the next topic. North Wilkesboro released their all-star format for this year's all-star race. Honestly, the all-star format is pretty basic. It's nothing new when it comes to the all-star race, so I'm not going to go in-depth too much when it comes to the all-star format, but there's one thing in particular I want to talk about, and I'm very excited. Apparently, NASCAR has been listening to all the people in all the podcasts, and they're going to try something a little different with their tires in the all-star race. How? Hold on, bro. Instead of bringing just your standard Goodyear tire... They're going to be bringing three different types of tire to the track. They're going to be bringing your standard tire plus your wet weather tires, which come to be expected. But they're also bringing in a third tire, which they're calling the option tire into the mix. And the way this tire is being described, it's a softer tire made from the same compounds 
as the wet weather tire, so we should see an increase and where when it comes to these tires. This is something a lot of drivers, myself, a lot of personalities have been asking for. This is very exciting for the sport that they're going to introduce potentially a new tire and we're gonna try it out at Wilkesboro. This is, it's great, very exciting. I'm gonna come. Honestly, we don't have a bunch of information on this yet. Steve Phillips did speak on it, but it's expected to be quite a show in the all-star race nascar even has it set up where they would use the prime tire our usual tire to qualify but all the drivers will have to start the race on the option tires this should be a great race i think nascar and the fans and the drivers were extremely disappointed with the return to wilkesboro last year and they want to make sure this one is a good one i'll tell you this right now it might not end up being the best race but it for sure will be entertaining and must watch television. Now on to this, there's been a lot of rumors and a lot of talk that a big company could be leaving one of the smaller teams in the Cup Series. There's been this huge rumor going around that Kroger will be leaving JTG Doherty at the end of the season, and apparently they might be making the move to Joe Gibbs Racing. Personally, if you couldn't, if you couldn't tell already, I am a Joe Gibbs Racing fanboy. But I honestly would not like to see this. I do not want to see Kroger come to Joe Gibbs Racing. Please! Please! No! And that's because I really enjoy JTG Doherty and these smaller race teams. There's been talks and rumors over the last five, six, seven years that JTG Doherty was going to get out of the sport. And from my vantage point for JTG Doherty on why they haven't closed their doors already is because of the personnel they have in the building and because of Kroger flipping the bill. You see it every week, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is able to get these big brands onto the car and that is because of Kroger. Kroger has a bunch of money and they make things happen for Ricky Stenhouse and JTG. I always struggle saying JTG. I always, it's, uh, it's, so it's a hard thing to say sometimes. But I really hope this doesn't turn out to be true and Kroger is able to work out something with Doherty because I would really love to see JTG still in the sport. Because honestly, if they lose Kroger, I think there's a really good chance that they could sell that charter before the year is up. Now on to our final story, and I think this is why most people tuned in. We had some pretty bad news earlier today that Eric Jones will be out for Dover Motor Speedway. Eric Jones ended up suffering a compression fracture of the lower vertebrae. Essentially, he really messed up his spine and his back he will be unable to race this weekend, and who knows for how long. I'm definitely not a doctor, but if you were asking me, I would expect him to be out for at least a month, maybe two, maybe even three months, depending on how severe and how he's able to heal from this injury. NASCAR has already given the playoff waiver to Eric Jones, so he can still make the playoffs if he comes back into the season later. All this after that gnarly crash at Talladega Super Speedway, he went to the infield care center, got released, Later checked into a hospital where they figured this out. It's very disappointing to see. I'm a big fan of Eric Jones, and I feel like he always faces hardships. Eric Jones, a very talented race car driver, is completely worthy of driving the 43, has proven himself on multiple different sorts of tracks and multiple different sorts of series. I personally think he's one of the most talented drivers in the Cup Series, but he's faced so many hardships throughout his career. So this is just another hardship. And it's really unfortunate to see for that Jones boy. But with all this, it has created an opportunity for one of the most talented young racers in NASCAR today, and that being Corey Heim. Corey Heim will make his first Cup Series start, piloting the number 43 on Sunday at Dover Motor Speedway. I'm very excited to see how he can do. I wish all the luck to Corey Heim, and I wish that Eric Jones can heal it up really quickly. That way he can get back into the 43 and maybe win a race before the year is up. So those are some pretty big stories I went through today for the weekly rundown. Let me know your thoughts in the comments on the subjects I talked about here today. What do you think of the scoring pylons? Do you think NASCAR should keep them in place, update them, or do you think they should just tear them all down? I, I really hope it's not that last opinion. I, I, I'm pointing at you. you. You better not say that. What do you think about NASCAR and North Wilkesboro bringing in these different tires for the all-star race personally i'm very excited about it what do you think what do you think of the future of jtg doherty 
I'm always going to struggle saying that name. JTG Doherty Racing. What do you think of the future of them and Kroger? Also, what are you expecting out of Corey Himes' debut? Also, when do you expect Eric Jones to be back? Plus, could we potentially see other drivers pilot the 43 in the incoming weeks? Well, that'll do it for me. My name is Kyle, a.k.a. Racing Boy Short, saying peace.